Welcome, and thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I'm Pastor Lance. I'm the pastor here at Evergreen, the Church on the Hill in Graham, Washington, and we are so glad that you are with us. As we begin um, worship this morning, I'd like to read out of the Old Testament. It's actually from the prophet Zephaniah, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. And the word of the Lord says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Well, wherever you are today, uh, watching this service, the Lord is with you. And all of those things that that passage talks about, He is going to be doing in your life. And so welcome, welcome to worship today. Uh, Right off the bat, click like and click share. And so that uh, that will make sure people know. By the way, if you um, happen to... um, have subscribed to us or follow us, you can, um, on Saturday, you will get a little reminder in your Facebook. You can click on that and you can share that reminder. Um, and that goes out and you can uh, have that be shared out to your, the people uh, that are your friends. And so uh, that's another thing that you can do. Um, next Sunday, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. So remember to have bread and wine or juice at your house. And we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. So just want to remind you of that. If you have a prayer request, we would love, we would love to be able to pray for you. Um, go to our webpage, evergreenchurchonthehill.com, all one word, and uh, click on the link for, uh, for prayer requests, and you can submit uh, a prayer request there. And we will include that in our noon call to prayer that goes out six days a week. Um, also, if you would like to give online, there, uh, there's that tab. If you go to the prayer request, click that prayer request. It also takes you to a major page, and uh, online giving is uh, an option there as well. Our, our post office box, if you would like to mail us something, is P.O. Box 1447, Graham, Washington, 98338. P.O. Box 1447, Graham, Washington, 98338. And we're still running our hour of prayer, and we have three different time slots, Monday evenings, 6.30 to 7.30. Here, the sanctuary is open for people to come and pray. Wednesday, noon to 1, the sanctuary is open, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., again, the sanctuary is open for prayer. Speaking of prayer, let's go to prayer right now as we... uh, begin this worship service. Father, we pray that you would be with us today. We know you're watching over us. We know that um, you're going to quiet our hearts. But Lord, we just want to come before you and let you know how much we appreciate all that you do in our lives, uh, that you have invited us uh, to be in the audience of, in the King, in the, in the, in the, in the actual place where you are. <clears throat> and so we thank you for inviting us to come into your presence this morning. Uh, fill wherever we are uh, with the Holy Spirit, uh, that we would be changed because we have been in your presence today, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. 
Our responsive call to worship today uh, is going to be led by the Lampsons, David and Kirsten Lampson. And so, uh, David and Kirsten, please lead us in the call to worship right now. We are here to worship a remarkable God. The love of God welcomes us. The grace of Christ awaits us. The joy of the Spirit enfolds us. Come as joyful. Come as eager. Come as thankful. Come as the recipients of amazing grace. The love of God overflows our hearts. The grace of Christ liberates our spirits. The joy of the Spirit sings in our mind as we come to worship the living and true God. song is called Adonai. In your Old Testament, if you look and you see the word Lord, that's the word Yahweh. Um, when you see God, one of the other names for God or words for God in the Old Testament is Adonai. And so when we say Adonai, 
Uh, we're, we're just saying the word God. Uh, there is a phrase at the end of the second verse that says, Baruch haba Bashem, Baruch haba Bashem, which is, blessed is he who comes in the name of, and then the next word is Adonai. So uh, let's sing Adonai. eternity, mystery behind the veil, Lord over heaven and earth, God of Israel, come with your wisdom and See your glory fill the sky. Adonai, Adonai, every knee will bow to you, Lord Most High. Adonai, Adonai, you alone are God, every tongue will cry. Ways. Praise is lifted on high. Hear the beautiful gaze, long to see you arise. It's coming up here in just a second. Here we go. When all of Zion sings, Baru Haba
all searching for answers, only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Our family life portion of the worship service today has Jack Meyer um, give, bringing us greeting. Uh, Jack's mother um, has been on our uh, noon call to prayer uh, for many, many weeks. Uh, she has um, uh, cancer, and so uh, Jack is going to just uh, welcome and say hi to you, brothers and sisters. So Jack, why don't you greet your brothers and sisters in Christ? Just wanna say hi to the congregation and miss all you guys and can't wait to get back to all worshiping again and hope everybody is well and doing good. And I just wanna say thanks for everybody praying for my mom that uh, has cancer. She's doing a lot better now. She's up on her own, eating on her own, uh, going to the bathroom on her own. And and uh, yeah, she's back to her normal self. She, Still's got the cancer, but she's back normal, getting up and doing things. And so I just want to thank you all for the prayers. Prayers are awesome. And uh, yeah, just thank you. It's time for us to come to the Lord's presence in prayer. Prayer is is us doing several things. One, it's uh, thanking God for who who God is. Another is um, uh, humbling ourselves and saying, "Your will, not my will." Uh, Another thing that we do is we stand in the gap between people and situations and the Father, and we intercede on their behalf. We conclude our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer, and today um, I will be leading us in the Lord's Prayer at the conclusion of our prayer time. So please join with me as we pray. Father, in the evenings, it's getting dark much, much earlier. And here in western Washington, it's been cloudy, and so the darkness seems to come even quicker. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the light of the world, and that where the light is, there is no darkness. Thank you that with us being in your presence right now, you, uh, the, the light of Christ is shining upon us and shining in us and through us. 
Father, hear us now as we bring prayers of thanksgiving to you for things that you have been doing in our midst. And so, hear our prayers now. Father, later today, a sister church of ours, Parkway Presbyterian Church, it's an, also an evangelical Presbyterian church over in Parkland, um, Bill Hemming is going to be installed as, um, as, their new, as their new pastor. And so, Lord, hear us as we pray for, for Bill uh, and his family, uh, for the Parkway Church, and for the installation service that will happen later this afternoon. So hear those prayers right now. Father, we are getting awfully close to the election, and the ballots in Washington State have all been mailed out. Hear us as we pray for our country, as we pray for our state and our local elections. Lord, hear those prayers now. Father, I'm sure that every one of us has someone in our lives that is, is, uh, is sick or um, needs surgery or is recovering from surgery or something like that. And so hear us as we pray for a person in our lives who's been sick and who needs your healing touch. Father, I'm pretty sure that most all of us know someone who is lonely uh, because of the closed-inness from the pandemic. So hear us as we pray for that person in our lives that's lonely right now. Hear that prayer. Father, it's very likely that we have someone in our lives that is depressed or dejected. Here it says we pray for that person right now. Holy Spirit, bring a person to mind or a situation to mind that needs prayer. And now hear us as we pray for that thing or that person right now. Thank you, Father, that you are a loving Father, as we've sung, a good, good Father, and you have Listen to your children, that's us. Bring requests to you. We maybe didn't pray the prayer that, um, that really needed to be prayed. Maybe we didn't have all the information. Um, but Lord, you know what needed to be prayed. And we thank you that you are already acting. Uh, maybe not in the ways we would like, but in the ways that are best. And so we're going to thank you now for how you're answering prayers. And we're going to look forward to seeing what you do, and we're going to praise you through all of this. And because we prayed all these things in the name of Jesus. And now we unite our voices together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are continuing in our sermon series called Seven Hebrew Words for Praise, and these are the seven words that are found in the book of Psalms. Today we're going to be looking at two, two words, and um, Zamar and Tehillah are the two that we're going to be looking at today. Let's pray. Father, speak to us. One of these words for praise, I think we do all the time. The other one, most of us may not have ever had that particular experience. And so we pray that you would speak to us today so that we would learn about both of these and that they're related and how we can praise you using these words. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Four short scripture passages from the book of Psalms. Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 22, 3 says, Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Psalm 57, 7 says, My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. And Psalm 92, verse 1 says, It is good to give thanks to sing praises, Lord, to your name, O Most High. Music plays an important role in our lives. Starts really young. I think the first music that a baby hears is before they're born, and that music is the thump, 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 thump of their mother's heartbeat. Music or song calms a crying baby. Many a mother or father or grandma or grandfather has sat in a chair and sung to a crying baby. Music was part of the way that we learned our ABCs, maybe even before we knew what ABCs were. I know that Brenda and I have sung the ABC song with both of our granddaughters, and they learned, well, the the youngest one has not learned her ABCs yet, but she's starting to learn them, and part of that is because of song, using music. Using music and song is a great way to remember things. It's amazing how we remember things that are linked with songs. And I remember when um, our nieces and nephews who were homeschooled had to learn the states, all 50 states, uh, the names of them. And there's actually a song that you sing that goes right down through. And there's one song for learning the names of the states. There's another song from learn- for learning all of their capitals. So music has played an important part in our lives, and music is something that people use to remember Scripture. Singing Scripture is a great way to remember Scripture. A little phrase I've come up with, I haven't seen if anybody else has written it, so I'm not going to claim it totally as mine, but as I was preparing this message, it came to me, and it was this, music, mo- music moves the heart, music expresses the heart. Music moves the heart, music expresses the heart. I want to talk about the expresses the heart as it relates to three different songs right here. So you can kind of maybe feel that. This first one, um, 
we have not lived through. It was written many, many years ago, and it is the national anthem of our country. But I know people who have fought for our freedoms. And this song means so much to them because of their experience. And when we think of the words, it can really help it to, to ch move our heart and change our heart. Um, this last couple of weeks, um, I've been reading um, about the Civil War. I've never studied the Civil War. And in a few years after I retire, one of the things Brenda and I are going to do is a big trip back east, and we're going to visit a number of Civil War sites. And so I thought I should, I should learn a bit about, more about the Civil War. And after reading about some of the horrific battles and uh, people not quite sure uh, when morning came who was going to be the winner of a particular battle, and there were literally tens of thousands of people who had been killed, this Star Spangled Banner means a lot more today, having read about, um, I know this was not written about the Civil War, but to, to see that through the eyes of the battle and through the people, eyes of people who have survived and through my friends, listen to the words of the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. While the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the raucous red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. As we come to our election season this year, whoever wins, we as a nation, we as Jesus' followers, we need to remember this song and the words of this song and that we are one nation under God and it should mean something to us. The, the second song I want to talk about is called America the Beautiful or Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies. And when we sing this um, around the time of 4th of July here at the church, I can barely make it through it uh, without crying because I have pictured myself many of the things that are in this song. I just want to like to read just the, the first verse. Oh beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. I went to Washington State University over in the Palouse, which is in the far east part of our state, and that is where you will see amber waves of grain and the mountains and stuff. Again, we need to remember this song the day after the election, and we stand united as a country. Okay? Now I have another one. You're going to wonder why I'm, we're doing, I'm doing this song. Uh, and it is the Canadian national anthem called O Canada. I'm sharing this one. We have people who are Canadian citizens who are part of our church, uh, and they have family members, and we have people who watch us who are up in Canada. And I have, on TV during um, sporting events, heard Canadians sing their, this song. And they sing it with loud and proud voices, more so than we ever sing our, our, our national anthem. And it moved me when I heard that. And hear the words, O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. 
With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north, strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. For our election time, a part of me wants us to scribble out Canada and put U.S. there. And that we would sing those words as a citizen of this country, of our country. So those express the feeling of our hearts, those songs. And they even move us as we sing them, or as we hear the words. Last Sunday, we ended our worship service uh, with a song called Hope and Glory. And it was partly a prayer for our country, but it's also a song that expresses our heart, and it also moves us. If you weren't watching last week, I, just, I want to read the words to you. But again, a song is so powerful. Hear, o, hear our cry, O King of Heaven. Jesus, hope of every heart. We are lost without your glory. We are lost without you, God. Be the fire that burns within us. Flames of love that purify. Send your power and your salvation. Let us see your kingdom come. Only you can move the mountains. Only you can heal our land. Christ alone, our hope and glory. Christ alone, in you we stand. Turn our eyes and show us mercy, how we need your Father's love. Lead us home and out of darkness with your gospel burning bright. Only you can move the mountains. Only you can heal our land. Christ alone, our hope and glory. Christ alone, in you we stand. And then there's the bridge. And it starts quietly. And we go through it four times. It starts quietly, and then each time it builds. And it builds till we're, we're standing and we're declaring this. And then it gets back to quiet at the end as though it's a prayer. It says, we believe our God is mighty. We believe our God is here. We believe our King is coming. Christ alone in you we stand. Praise the Lord, our God is mighty. Praise the Lord, our God is here. Praise the Lord, our King is coming. Christ alone in you we stand. Those are powerful songs. And those songs can express our hearts and they can move our hearts. Since music plays such an important part in our lives, it only may, makes sense to ask the question, why, why does ma music uh, do that? And, and, and why is music then important to God? And especially our relationship with God. I think it's really simple. We are made in the image of God. Throughout Scripture, we see over and over and over again uh, pictures and, and words that speak of singing and music. And I think music is part of God's personality and that we have been created with, uh, with, a, with a love for music and, and that it should be an important part of our lives and it should be and it is an important part of our worship and important of our praise of God. Today we're using two words uh, that um, have to do with, with music. Um, the, the first of these words um, is uh, the word zamar. And uh, it is, well, let, let me read the two uh, passages that dealt with that. Psalm 57, I read, said, My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast, I will sing and make melody. What it says in the Hebrew 
using the word zamar word, zamar word is, my heart is steadfast, O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make zamar. The other one is Psalm 92, 1. It is good to give thanks. Uh, it, is good, good, it is good to give thanks to sing praises, Lord, to your um, name, O Most High. This is what it says. It is good to give thanks to Zamar, Lord, to your name, O Most High. The word Zamar uh, means to sing with instruments, to make music accompanied by the voice. It has to do with the plucking of, of instruments. Um, and so they had, um, they had um, the lyre was a forerunner to our current day guitar. Um, it was the idea of, that carries of making music as we bring praise to God. We're bringing praise to God and we're doing it through music. It means to touch the strings. And we see that in Psalm 150. The second word is tehillah, 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 and it means to sing or to laud. It's often defined as hymns of the Spirit, a spontaneous new song. So this is singing from a melody in your heart uh, that as you're, as you're praying or as you're worshiping, that, that, that the music just flows from you and, and you add words to it. So it is a special kind of singing. It is unprepared. It is unrehearsed. It is a new song. If you sing it a second time, it is not Tehillah anymore. It is Zamar. So this is the spontaneous flowing up out of your soul singing praises to God. I want to talk for just a moment about songs in our worship service. Um, Again, they express our heart and they also move our heart. Before I jump into a worship service, I want to just talk about Christian music as a whole. Um, I think Christian music is good. It really is. And um, there's a lot of things things that Christian music does for us. Now, having said that, I want to talk about specifically music on Christian radio. Music on Christian radio uh, is really designed to encourage people uh, in their faith, to inspire people, to cheer people up. Um, It is to to move our hearts, as we've talked about, and also to express our heart. But the music that's played on a Christian radio station is not specifically designed for worship. Um, I know it, it sometimes troubles people when I say, I don't listen to a whole lot of Christian radio, and I'll tell you the reason why. Because I spend my time as a pastor who leads a worship team looking for worship music. Looking for worship, music that is designed to worship and praise God. And if you listen to to Christian radio, you will find those periodically. Um, But... The vast majority is there to inspire us, to lift us up, and it's not necessarily designed for worship. As an example, one of my favorite groups is King and Country. And and then we're talking about, I've got four songs that are in the top 20 right now. I just grabbed four of them. Together is one of them. Great Great song. It's not about worship. That's okay. Christians can listen to songs that aren't about worship. That's, that's it's a great thing to do. Um, Hillsong Young and Free, Never Have I Ever, a great song to inspire young people. Uh, and, um, but, 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 but it's, it's about me, I. Never have I ever what? And, and so that's what it's about. Um, Jonathan Taylor has one out that is in the top 20. It's called I Trust You. Um, Switch has one called Jump. All great songs. Now, many of you maybe haven't heard those songs, but here's one that you probably have heard, and it's, it's, it's an older one now. It's called I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me. Fabulous song, fabulous song. It's not about worshiping God. It's about me. I can only imagine what it's going to be like when I can be in your sight. 
It's about me. And so much of the songs on Christian radio are exactly that way because they're designed to inspire me or to inspire you, but they're not specifically designed to worship God. Um, And so when it comes to Sunday morning worship or Sunday night worship or Saturday night worship or whenever people worship, the songs on Christian radio may or may not be appropriate in a worship setting or in a place where we are specifically designing to praise God, to bring praise to God. As a pastor who, who, who plans worship, um, it is a huge task to make sure that that is what our music does, is, is praising God. There's a scripture passage uh, that is found in Nehemiah. And the nice thing about uh, this passage is it, it shows God's people doing exactly what we're talking about here today. Some of it would have been spontaneous, which would have been Tehillah. Some of it would not have been spontaneous, and that would have been Zamar. In Nehemiah chapter 12, begin with verse number 27. So the wall has been completed um, under the direction of Nehemiah and also Ezra the priest. And this is what it says, Nehemiah 12, 27. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with gladness, with thanksgiving, and with singing, with cymbals and harps and lyres. And then it goes on, and, and, they, and it goes, I brought the leaders of the singing of Judah up onto the wall and appointed two choirs that gave thanks. And one went to the south wall to the dung gate, and they started going one direction. And then over in verse number 38, it says the other choir uh, who gives thanks went to the other wall, the north wall, and they went around in that direction, and they sang and they praised God. And that's a great picture they were probably singing songs that they had known before, um, and there could have been some spontaneous uh, singing of new songs, and that would, have, that would have been Tehillah. And so music is, and particularly as we're talking about these two here, Zamar and Tehillah, it is about God. It is not about me, and it is not about you. It doesn't matter if it is done with a pipe organ or if it's done with a cymbal, it doesn't matter if it's a trumpet, it doesn't matter if it's a full choir, it is about music praising God and that words are going to be involved with it. Okay? So it's not about you and it's not about me. So there are some wonderful worship songs that I don't like the melody. That's okay. It's not about me. And I'm sure that there's some worship songs that we do and, and praise songs that we do uh, about praising God that you don't like because you don't like the music or the style. That's okay, because it's not about you. It is about praising God. Songs that we use in worship should primarily be about God and about our worship and praise of Him. They are expressing what you and I feel in our hearts and what we know about God, and then we turn right around and we praise Him for what He's doing, for what He is doing. And, and so... Those are great things to do in worship. Now, most of what I'm talking about is Zamar. We have not, that I am aware of, experienced Tehillah in worship while I've been here. I think typically uh, you would find it more in a private setting. But Zamar is singing songs that have already been written. And, And I really like those because... I can worship while I, while I play the guitar at, at, at other gatherings where I'm not leading. I can worship uh, in song, and I can the, the 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 emotion that goes through the singing expresses what I feel inside my heart, same as it does with you to God, and that is why uh, Zamar is so powerful. I do want to talk just a moment about Tehillah. Tehillah, I personally have never experienced myself. Um, I've, I've seen 
I think on, I, I've looked at some YouTube videos, and one of the places where it showed that happening was at the Wailing Wall um, over in Jerusalem. Um, but I've heard about it, and that is where a person is praying, and they're worshiping God, and, and then they just burst out in song, and it is a new song. It's not a song that they've, that they've ever sung before. And, and that, that is, that is Tehillah. And I want to encourage you to be open uh, to Tehillah and, and for me to be open to it as well. So how do we, what do we take away from this? And it's always important for us to have takeaways from one of our uh, message uh, here at the church. And, and this is it. Praise God in song. God doesn't care if you have a great voice. In fact, most of us don't. What he loves is to hear you sing. You know, I'll, I'll never forget singing. Um, our our son-in-law plays the guitar. He also plays the piano. He's, he fills in for us here at, at times here at the church. And um, over at their house, uh, and they'll, they'll sing. And um, when, when Rosie was young, Oh, she, she knew songs, and she would sing, and to watch her sing, and to listen to her. She didn't have the best, word, best voice. Um, it's not bad. She does a great job of keeping time. Um, but but, it, but it, it's the singing and the joy that, that comes from that. Do that in your life. Do that in your church. If you don't have a great voice, and maybe you can't, carry a tune, I give you permission to sing loudly at your church. Sing loudly. God will hear it, and if the people around you don't like the, the way that you're able to do it, they'll sing louder to drown you out. And that just makes our singing even louder before the Lord God. Praise God in song. For those of you that play an instrument, praise God playing your, the instrument that you play. Let the songs express what is in your heart and let them move your heart because God loves you and has touched us so much we're going to break out and we're going to sing praises to him. We're going to be adding a new song to our repertoire up here at the church in, in the next few weeks and it's called We Praise You. We Praise You. Listen to the words. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing, we sing your name in the dark, and it changes everything. We sing with all we are, and we claim victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. The chorus, we'll see you break down every wall, We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high with all creation cry. God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. And then this is the bridge. This is what living looks like. This is what feeling, freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what heaven looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With creation we cry. God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Praise God with song. Praise God from your heart. Praise God with Tehillah and Zamar. Let's pray. We praise you. We praise you.
Father, in this coming week, help songs come to mind that express the praise we feel in our hearts for you. And let us praise you in song while we're at home, while we're in the car, while we're in church. Let us offer you praises with song and melody and instruments. And Lord, if you should so desire, cause a melody and words to well up within us, that Tehillah would come from our lips with a new song, a song of the Spirit, as we praise you. We praise you now for who you are. Thank you. And this we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. The setting sun. His love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. As our service comes to a close, um, we conclude with a benediction. The Old Testament says that the priest is supposed to bless the people. The New Testament says the followers of Jesus are the priests. So what we do, I'm going to ask you to do at home. Please stand as we uh, conclude our worship service. If you love Jesus, raise your hands because you're a priest. And the blessing from Scripture is on your screen and bless the people who are in the room with you and the people who are watching today. And we're going to be led by Gretchen Harris. So Gretchen, lead us in the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Well, it sure has been good having you worship with us today. And we're going to end the worship like we always do with three amens. And so... There's your notes.
a great week serving the Lord.